Today we're going to be bringing you the World Cup draw, our squad announcement, Panini stickers and the small matter of our opening encounter at Spain 2030. So let's begin with that World Cup draw and by the time we reach 2030 we have an expanded World Cup where the group stage is made up of groups with just three teams contesting. We've been drawn in Group B, with the first team in that group being Ecuador. We click through to see who would be the second seed to go into Group B. Unfortunately, fate handed us European outfit Turkey, and then we came out as the third team in Group B, supposedly the favourites to top this group. Although, having had a look at those squads, I'm not sure it's going to be plain sailing. So the first game in Group B has already taken place. Turkey played Ecuador. Turkey needed an injury time equaliser to gain a 1-1 draw, just showing how even this group might be. If you... So straight after beating Mali and qualifying for the World Cup, we had a couple of friendlies where we played the Gambia, a team will be drawn against in the AFCON qualifiers. So we've played them twice since the last episode. In the friendly, we managed to beat them 4-0 with goals through Fulgini first of all, and then Kasunu scored before one of our backup players who's come into the side, Brahima Utara, he got the third goal. And another Utara, Aziz Utara, showed that some of our backup players can hit the back of the net when they're called on. And then we had a bit of a topsy-turvy game against Zambia in our second friendly. Despite being ranked well above them, it was actually Zambia that took the lead. And at half-time, we had to read the riot act to the players because we were 1-0 down and staring defeat in the face, but we came roaring back with goals through Datra Fafana in the 47th minute and in the 49th minute. He completed his hat-trick by the 62nd minute, and then we had two goals for Newcastle's Hamed Traore, who'd come on as a substitute, and we decided to switch to a shadow striker in a bid to try and get the best out of the player, and thank you to the comments section for that suggestion and he managed to score in the 71st and the 83rd minute, and even step up for a penalty to complete his hat-trick, round off a 6-2 win. Then the AFCON qualifiers began, and we beat Gambia 4-0 for the second time in a few months. This time, Datra Fafana got us off to a good start, with a penalty in the fourth minute, before Hamed Traore sprung into life once more, playing behind the front two as this shadow striker. He burst through and scored in the 11th minute, added his second in the 22nd minute and completed his second hat-trick in two games by banging in the third in the 86th minute. But the game against Mozambique was not quite as straightforward. We took the lead through Ahmed Diallo, who converted a Wilfred Singo pass, but then our opponents got a penalty right on the cusp of half-time to equalise, and we didn't take the lead again until the 60th minute when Traore fed Fafana and we were back into the lead. But just four minutes from time, I thought we'd thrown away our win. Mozambique managed to score an equalising goal, and it was in the third minute of injury time that we managed to grab victory from the jaws of a draw as Ahmed Diallo scored a winner for us. And then we had our two pre-World Cup friendlies. We organised a game against Albania, a Southern European opposition, hoping that this might prepare us for the game against Turkey. We performed quite well in this one. Datra Fafana scored for us. Wilfred Singo put us 2-0 up by half-time, and Hamid Traore continued his fabulous goal-scoring form by getting a third in the 59th minute. Unfortunately, Real Madrid's Armando Broja scored a consolation goal for Albania, but that was a good win. And then we played Venezuela, arguably softer opposition than Albania, but they were able to get the win against us in this game. Now, in fairness, we were giving minutes to lots of our backup players, so this wasn't our strongest side, but going down 1-0 and looking pretty toothless against Venezuela does give us cause for concern as injuries and suspensions mount up in this tournament. I'm not sure the players coming into the first 11 are as strong as the ones they would be replacing. But to our World Cup squad next, we've made some big announcements and we've made a huge signing so I'm sure by now you've all had chance to get to a news agent and purchase your copy of the Spain 2030 Panini sticker album. It's great to see the Ivory Coast in there and we can use the sticker album to talk you through our squad announcements. So if we tear open our first packet and see who we've got, ah, we'll start off our Panini sticker book by putting in our shiny emblem. It's always nice to start with a shiny 
but we want to know who's made the squad. So I don't think it'll be any surprise to see Nicholas T as our starting goalkeeper. T is perhaps not quite of the same quality as some of our other players, but if we show you our backup goalkeeper, Eliza Tarpe, you'll see that he's won 44 caps for the national team and has got communication of eight and agility of five. So you can see why T is firmly cemented as our first choice. Second up to make the squad, we've got Simali Diamande, whose place in the starting 11 is actually under threat for today's game. We might be making some changes to our starting 11, but a player who's sure to start is Wilfred Singo, the Atletico Madrid right back. is going to be a key creator for us in this tournament. And at the centre of our defence, expect to see Mark Gaye, who's with Crystal Palace, but is attracting attention from Premier League duo Liverpool and Everton. He will be one of our starting centre-halves. Jonathan Panzo is going to be more of a backup player. He's had a difficult season at Stuttgart. And with Ryan Sessignon again refusing a call-up to the Ivory Coast squad, our starting left-back is going to be Silas Nacker, who's currently playing in the Championship for Sunderland. If we move into our midfield, we've got some exciting talents, starting with Adilo Kasunu, who's playing for Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. If he gets injured, then the man we will turn to will be Adamo Nagola, who's playing in the championship with Sheffield United. Ibrahim Sangari is listed as a midfielder and that's where we've played him since his return to the national team. Our other star man could be Hamed Traore. Now that we switched him to a shadow striker, the Newcastle United forward has been looking dangerous in that number 10 role. Angelo Fulgini is going to be the man that we're going to charge with creating chances for us. And then, although we were unable to convince any dual nationality players to pledge their allegiance to Ivory Coast ahead of this World Cup, we were able to coax a player out of retirement. And I think he could be our strongest player in the squad. He might be 33 years old, but Frank Kessie is still a world-class player. Kessie is currently playing for Manchester United, but there's interest in his services from both Juventus and Barcelona. Physically, he's still a superb player, even at 33. Mentally, his teamwork, work rate, positioning, determination, bravery and aggression make him an ideal ball-winning midfielder. And his passing is strong as well. And he will get forward and support the play with some of his player traits. So bringing a player of the calibre of Frank Kessie, even though he had retired from international football and at 33, he might not be at his peak. I still think he's going to be a valuable addition to our midfield. And then that takes us to our front players. Our backup striker is going to be Shaka Traore, who's playing in Mexico currently. But our front two is definitely going to be made up of Ahmed Diallo, currently playing his trade in La Liga for Villarreal. And then the man we're relying on for goals, Datro Fafana, the Marseille hitman, is going to be the man that could fire us to qualification for the knockout stages of this FIFA 2030 World Cup. So our first choice starting eleven has been pretty much set in stone since Frank Kessie announced his return to international football. But on the eve of the tournament, I'm thinking that we're going to make a slight change to how we've been playing recently. Odilon Kasunu has played as a defensive midfielder as a halfback in all of the games that we've used him for since taking over. But I'm thinking we're going to move him into centre-half because Simali Diamande has been throwing in some pretty ropey performances as a centre-half for the national team. He's had a decent season in the Bundesliga for Stuttgart, but for today's game, I'm going to rotate him out. He might return for the Turkey game if this experiment doesn't work, but Kasunu is more than comfortable playing as a centre-half. In fact, he's probably more natural there than he is playing as a defensive midfielder, and it means we're going to bring back Ibrahim Sangara, who was our ball-winning midfielder in the central areas. Instead, we're going to ask him to play just in front of the back four. He's comfortable playing as a halfback, even though he's probably better as a ball-winning midfielder. But as an option for that role, Frank Kessie is absolutely superb. He had been playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder alongside Sangari in recent games, meaning that Fulgini had dropped out of the squad and we weren't playing a deep-line playmaker anymore. And I think we missed Fulgini in that role. So we're going to reinstate the deep-line playmaker for the Ecuador game. And then going forward, we're hoping that this man can be the star of the show for us. Hamid Traore has burst back into life since we started playing him as a shadow striker. Allegedly, he's not quite as good in that role as he might be as an attacking midfielder or an advanced playmaker, but he has proven himself a good finisher, scoring in multiple games since we've given him that role and scoring two hat-tricks. Granted, 
maybe not against opposition quite as strong as we will be facing today, but I'm hoping that he will be able to get himself on the score sheet. If he doesn't, then we're going to be relying on Ahmad Diallo, who can be a bit hit and miss in international football, and Datra Fafana, who is certainly more hit than he is ever miss. He's got great pace and acceleration. Hopefully, he's going to be able to use that to be a threat to the Ecuadorian defence today. This is the biggest game I think we might have had in FM22 Mercenary. Let's give you the scout report on today's opponents. Our World Cup journey leads us from Africa to Spain and the southern city of Seville, the host for Group B. Our opponents in our first game will be an Ecuador side that are considered as outsiders to take the group, but they have world-class talent in the form of Moises Caicedo. An Argentinian coach, Guillermo Hoyas, has already guided them to a 1-1 draw against Turkey in their opening game. Our opponents know that a win will clinch qualification as Ecuador take on Ivory Coast. So the team talk is done. We've got no response from any of our players, so... We have a little bit of a nervous feeling about this. We did not look good against Venezuela, who were going to be a similar opponent to Ecuador. I have a nasty feeling that this could be a tough game for us. And Turkey is only going to be tougher still, given some of the quality that they've got in their squad. So if we could get through today's game, maybe with a draw, but if we could win it, then we are going to be in the box seat for qualification for the knockout stages. We've got definite talent in our squad. We've got goals in our squad. It's just whether we can keep Ecuador at bay. We've got the ball on our right side, though. This is a long highlight. Singo is making a bursting run forward. He's hit the byline and sent a ball over. And Amadiallo has had two little nibbles at that. The first was blocked, but he slid in and put us ahead against Ecuador in this opening game. Six minutes on the clock. And we've made a dream start to this World Cup Finals. That should settle the players' nerves as well as my own. That shot got blocked and then it was played back across to him. That was a poor bit of defending, but Diallo slid in and put us into a 1-0 lead. And we're not done yet. Eight minutes on the clock and we're coming forward once more. Singo has a little effort. He burrs forward from right back, places a shot that their goalie plucks out of the air. And then he sends a long kick forward. Ecuador have managed to win it. And they are now trying to attack down the right-hand side. Unfortunately, our left-back can't get the ball clear. And they have equalized early. Gonzalo Plata. Well, we weren't ahead for long, were we? Nine minutes on the clock. We're already tied at 1-1. And this shows our defensive vulnerability. Naka had the ball to clear there. And he didn't. He dwelt on it. And Platter has managed to squeeze an effort home. Nicholas T did not cover himself in glory. Less than 10 minutes played. We're tied at 1-1. We've now got half an hour on the clock. Ecuador have got a throw in and they are looking dangerous. They'd only had one shot during the first 25 minutes of the game. But they've started to look a little bit more lively in the last five. Kessie's got the ball for us in midfield. He's played a 1-2. We're back to Kasunu. Now across to Mark Gaye. And he brings the ball forward for us. Naka has got some making up to do, I think, after giving away the pass for that goal. And again, he's looking a little bit out of his depth. He's lost the ball once more down the left flank. Maybe Jonathan Panzo might be appearing in this World Cup after all. We've got the ball to Singo, however. He's gone to the line. Datra Fafanu stings the keeper's palms with that effort. But you can see how dangerous Ecuador look on the break every time they come forward. We're into the 32nd minute. The highlights are coming thick and fast. Could this be another one for us? Mark Gay has the ball deep. He charges forward and we've given it away once more. It's been a little bit of a feature of our play. Is it nerves or is it a lack of quality that means that we keep giving the ball away? They're coming down our left once more. Natka is looking like David Hasselhoff in the opening scenes of Baywatch, unable to run across the sand, fortunately. Nicholas T shows some safe hands for us. Another player who did not cover himself in glory for that goal and owes us a little bit more. Hamad Traore can't get his shot off, but Ahmed Diallo is the man who has embraced the challenge of this World Cup. The Villarreal hitman has bagged himself two goals in the opening half of this game. And we are back into the lead. Nicholas T launches a kick forward. Hamid Traore did not have the pace to get clear of the defender, but on the edge of the box, well, Ahmed Diallo has just smashed that one home. 
Now, can we keep this lead to half time? In fact, we've got one more highlight. We're in two minutes of stoppage time. Fulgini sends in a corner. We're unable to get onto it, but Naka gets the ball back to Fulgini and he's got another chance to try and launch an attack for us. We've got 15 seconds until the interval. Can we get one more effort on goal? Hamad Traore has gone. We're looking for flags. That one looked like it could be offside. I didn't see the linesman's flag go off. The VAR review is being checked. This could be a dream first half for us. But the VAR officials have ruled it out. Traore had gone a little early. He'd gone more than a little early. But it was a good finish and it shows that as a shadow striker, he is dangerous. 2-1 is also a dangerous scoreline. We're going to tell the players they need to kick on another gear for the second half. We could get a win on this opening game. We've got one foot in the next round of the competition. The second half is underway. We've got some performances to keep an eye on. Odilon Kasunu has not settled in at centre-back too well. Fortunately, Mark Gay is playing well alongside him. Traore is on a 6.6 .6 currently, although if that goal had not been ruled out offside, he would be above a 7. So it shows how dangerous he can be when he bursts into the box. But I feel like we do need the third goal. Talking of Traore bursting into the box, there he goes. And rather than blast an effort at goal this time, he showed a bit of composure and just dinked it over the keeper as he sprawls, flails on the ground. And with a 3-1 lead now, we're looking a little bit more comfortable for that opening three points. That is such composure in front of goal. He really has come good since he became a shadow striker. That goal is all down to the comments section. They've scored one for us in a World Cup Finals. On 75 minutes, I think we will make our next change, but we have got a highlight before we get there on 72 minutes. Fafana is on now as a substitute. Plays a long ball back to Nicholas T and he's laid it out to Mark Gay in the back line. Kessie now playing as the deep line playmaker. Traore has made another lung busting run forward and this is a man reborn since the comment section made him a shadow striker. He didn't work as a Trek Artista. He didn't work as an advanced playmaker. He didn't work as an attacking midfielder. But as shadow striker, he has been superb. And we are now strolling to victory. Remember, Ecuador and Turkey have already played. Their game ended 1-1. So we will be top of this group with Turkey to play. And essentially, this will be Ecuador out of the tournament. And we also have the luxury of a couple more substitutions. And what I think we might do is rest some of our star players because the next game is just four days away. Wilfred Singo is looking tired. So we can bring on Kofi Kwao as our right back. The other player that's looking quite tired and booked is Sangari. So we can take him off and we'll bring on Sheffield United's Adamo Nogolo, who can play centre-back or can play in front of the back four. I think what I might do is ask him to play in front of the back four and move Kasunu back into that half-back role. Hopefully, that will give us the solidity we need to see out this game. Straight after those substitutions, we have got another highlight and Traore is in the mood. He's burst forward another time. And he's dinked another effort. This time, the goalie was standing up. No matter, Traore has managed to loft it over him. And I think that is a World Cup hat-trick for Traore. His third since we've taken over. Look how dangerous he is running into space. He's so close to the keeper, but still manages to get it up and down and into the goal for a 5-1 lead over Ecuador. The referee has added three minutes of stoppage time. We are deep into that now. We are just stroking the ball around. Traore has a, an effort for a fourth of the game. Datro has an open goal to make it 6-1 and he's hit the post. There's a little blot on the player's copybook there, but how strong has Traore looked? He finally looks like the player we thought he was going to be when we took over. Allegedly, along with Singo and now Kessie, he is our strongest player in the national side and hasn't he shown it today with that hat-trick? And we have just made a huge statement at this FIFA World Cup, a 5-1 victory. Let's show you the table. That win has not only put us top of the table, but with Ecuador having played both of their games, we are now through to the round of 32. But the tie against Turkey is still hugely important because we want to finish top of this group and potentially give ourselves a slightly easier game 
in the next round whilst we go and get the players ready for that game why don't you check out this video next if you're looking for your own football manager adventure then this video might just have teams in it that inspire your next save